Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to the next lecture for the IUPAC naming series. So in this lecture, we're going to discuss IUPAC rule one, which is going to be the first of three. And that is that you need to identify the parent carbon chain. So remember, we talked about in our terms the the uh, term main carbon chain or parent carbon chain. Those could be used interchangeably when we're going through this. So rule one says find the longest continuous carbon chain and count the number of carbons. Now you're going to note there's a couple of sub points here that are very important to follow when doing this. And we'll look at some examples, go through an example ourselves, And then there's one little caveat that I want to show you that sometimes students get confused when they come across. So first, the continuous counting means that you are starting at one end and when you're going through the chain and counting those carbons, you cannot retrace or go back over any carbon. So sometimes people have done activities where you put a pencil on the paper and you have to draw you know, a line or go through a certain maze and you can't backtrack or cross back over the mark you've already made. It's a similar principle here. You cannot, when you're moving along the carbon chain, go back over or recount any carbon. Even if you go back over it and you're not counting it again, you're not permitted to do that. And then you can see the second note down there says the longest carbon chain can be found using any path. So this is also important because most people are used to reading, at least if you're in the uh, US or an English speaking country, you're used to reading left to right. Okay, but when we do this, you can find the longest carbon chain going left to right, or right to left, or bottom to right, or top to bottom. It could be any type of combination. You can go through and you can connect these carbons as long as, again, you're following the rule above it, which is that there's no retracing over any individual carbon. So let's take a look at a couple examples here. We've got pentane. So you can see here, we've got one, two, three, four, five. So that would be a pentane. And we would not stop by coming down here and making this four because we couldn't come back up and count the three again once we've passed over it. So it would not be appropriate to have that bottom portion as part of the main chain. So that will be classified as a substituent. And when we put it as a substituent, we will deal with numbering that and naming that in the next two rules that come up. So remember, substituent is anything that is not a main part of the uh, carbon chain. So the parent chain. The next one we have here is nonane. And you can see here that we could go left to right Okay, but we really have to drop off at the bottom as we go to the right here. Now, in terms of numbering, which is rule two, there is actually an important way you have to number. You have to give the substituents the lowest priority. So we're gonna talk about that next time. But for right now, if you were coming from the other direction, that would be fine as well. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now again, notice that it would not be appropriate if I were to start here. It would be one, two, right? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you're missing out on a carbon if you were to start at that portion there. So you need to make sure that you're getting the most amount of carbons that you can in that parent chain when you get ready to start. Okay, so the next one that we have over here, hopefully you can see that the chain uh, going from left to right or right to left here that's highlighted in red is most certainly the longest portion. So if we were to number this, we look at it and say one, two, three, four. Now we would not drop off and put a five here because then we'd have to cross back over the four. So we continue forward with five, six. Again, don't drop off here and do seven and eight because we can keep going with seven, eight and get more, right? Nine, ten. 11, 12. So this would be a dodecane, which would be a 12 carbon ch chain when we're dealing with naming the parent chain. So let's take a look at the one that I have down here, right? So this one is not highlighted yet. We are going to find the longest chain. Now what I want you to do is you can pause the video for a second if you need to, but just take a moment and look at it. See if something jumps out as potentially the longest chain. You should be able to see it by design. 
All right, so hopefully you had a moment to consider it here. Now, if you take a look, it might be tempting again to start and go left to right, even if you see that this one goes up here. But let's take a look at this. So if we were to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, that's a pretty decent sized chain. We have a decade there. All right, but what happens if I were to start down here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you can see what's happening, nine, 10, 11. I get an additional carbon out of that, right? Now, you should be able to highlight or see, if I start from this end, I grab two carbons, one, two, whereas if I start from this end, I gather three carbons before I hit this common point here. And so that's important. When you're looking at this type of branching off of a main parent chain, you need to consider the longest path. Now, hopefully, most people are able to see that sort of just jump out at them and they can realize it. But it can take a little bit of practice, all right? So here's a question. What should you do when two parent chains are of equal length and they could be found in the structure being examined. So in other words, what happens if the structure I have has two different pathways, and we're not just talking about the same chain forward and back, but there's another branch, right, that goes a completely different way, and if I count that, all right, this is almost a similar example up here. If I had had 11 and 11 in two different ways, then you have to consider, right? But what would happen if they're of equal length and they're two different paths? Well, in that case, we will always pick the parent chain that will contain more substituents. So let's take a look at an example here, all right? So here are two different paths for the same compound. Now, if you take a look at the top path, this is going to be the correct path because when I look at the numbers here, I've got, let me change from red because we're doing red right here. All right, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So I have a heptane. This heptane has got four different substituents. It has a methyl here, a methyl here, a methyl here, and then it has a propyl group hanging up top. Now, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but I could also end up counting by saying one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I get a heptane again. Now this is a very different parent chain because now I have three substituents. I do have two methyls, but now I've got this other funky looking group over here. Okay, this is known as a sec butyl substituent. We'll talk about that when we get to our branch chain substituents. But this would be incorrect because I only get three different substituents here, whereas in the example up here, I had four different substituents, okay? So be careful if you find two paths and those paths are not identical to one another and you see that there are more substituents or less substituents in one, then you need to make sure that you pick out the one that has more substituents, okay? And then a final note here to wrap up rule number one lecture, be sure to practice finding parent chains in the review session of this course. So you're going to find that the course offers basically practice sessions similar to what I did in the middle of this lecture where you're going to pause the video and work on stuff and then we'll have a guided walkthrough and answer. And then if you go to the um, guide, the PDF guide that's included with this course, there's a part at the very end of it that's called Ascending Further. And that section gives you lots of different questions, almost like the end of a chapter in a college textbook and you will be able to practice. There's an answer key that goes along with that. So make sure you get practice identifying the longest carbon chain. It is the first important step if you're going to be successful in IUPAC naming. So with that, we will close this lecture and I will see you guys for rule two, which will be the next one.